All right. Woo! Hello. I recently made a video about Apple's product design style and while making that video, I made a discovery. Apple is really good at getting you to pay more for its products. Whether it's paying $570 to upgrade from an iPhone SE to an iPhone Pro, paying $800 to upgrade from a MacBook Air to a MacBook Pro, or paying over $5,000 to upgrade from the base level Mac Mini to the base level Mac Pro. A lot of this price difference is based on performance, but I think only a limited portion of people actually understand and the tech specs. So today I'm gonna to show you how Apple creates product families, which means creating a range of products that basically do the same thing. I'm gonna show you how Apple tweaks its style, whether it's designing a base level, mid-level, or high range product. And this should help you if you wanna create your own range of products, or if you're just interested on how Apple's doing things. So let's get started. In my Apple design guide, I briefly mentioned the concept of heavy forms. Apple has generally been moving to a more heavy visual style to separate itself as the more high-end, premium, high-quality product. So if we expand this idea even more, it would make sense that Apple uses this to differentiate between base level and more expensive products. My stupid iPad keeps uh, turning off. Thanks, Apple. Apple's less expensive products focus more on portability and lightness. Let's start with the Mac Mini. It's the least expensive of the three. It's made to look good in a home and or office. It has a small, slim form factor and is the smallest Mac model you can buy. Moving up in price, we have the Mac Studio. It's made for people who need a bit more performance from the computer, so designers, architects, movie makers, etc. With the increased performance comes a need for large electronics. Apple could have just made a scaled up version of the Mac Mini and made basically a larger Mac Mini or made a wider Mac Mini while keeping the product as slim as it was. But instead, Apple is essentially made a chunky looking Mac Mini, making something that looks extremely heavy. I mean, it looks like you'd have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger to pick this thing up. What's another funny line? I wanna do some jokes here. It looks like you'd have to be a super gym bro to pick this thing up. <laughs> okay, it's heavy, you get the idea. <laughs> Moving up to the most expensive category of the Mac Pro, which is the peak of Apple's computing performance. The body is made to look like one giant block of aluminum. Apple wanted their buyers to know that this is the most premium computer you could buy from them, so they made it look as heavy as possible. Like, honestly, I probably wouldn't pick this thing up for fear of my back giving out. To summarize all this heavy stuff, Apple is highlighting the great work of their engineers by using visual weight to communicate power and quality. So, taking this into account, we can start designing different versions of the router thingy we designed in the last video. So, I think the one we designed in the last video would be considered more the mid-range version. It looks like kind of heavy. So for a base level version, I think we want to go with a thinner version of what we already have. Something like this. Looks pretty good. Nice little thin airy guy. And for the most premium version, I think we want to go with a really big chunky guy. Oh yeah. That's a big boy. So putting it all together, we have a base level that's the thinnest as possible the mid-range that's a little bit thicker, and then the most expensive range, which is as heavy as possible. Looks good, let's keep going. So moving on into the details. My last video, I talked about Apple's fanaticism with reducing the details. This is kind of only partly true. Apple's usually using the level of detail to indicate performance. So meaning the most minimal products are the base range and the most complicated looking products are the high range. It's kind of like how Sylvester Stallone got more muscly and ripped than the Rocky movies. <laughs> This is the stupidest analogy, but we're gonna keep going with it. So the base level products are like rocky ones. Pretty smooth and undefined, but still good looking. So the iPhone SE is a great example of this. It's got the fewest details of any iPhone and also comes in at the lowest price. The mid-range products have a bit more detail, so a bit more like rocky, <laughs> rocky too. The iPhone 14 has noticeably more details. This really highlights the increased performance you get when you upgrade. There's also a lot more detail around the camera area specifically, really highlighting the increased performance you get from the cameras. These added details say, look at me, I do more things, or I do things better. The pro versions have the most details. So now we're getting into Sylvester Stallone and Rocky III. <laughs> this is so stupid. Is that oil? <laughs> Your brain associates an increased amount of detail with increased performance. It kind of says, I do the most things and I'm very, very technical. The iPhone Pro even has an extra camera lens to show this extra level of detail. The highest end product not only has to work better, it has to look like it works better. A really extreme version of this is the Mac Pro Grill. The Mac Pro Grill looks very complicated and technical compared to most very minimal looking Apple products. The air vents are made to look as visually complex as possible, highlighting the really high level performance you get from this machine. To bring it all together, 
Apple designers probably just watched a lot of Rocky movies and saw the Sylvester Stallone transformation from Rocky 1 into the later Rocky movies. Making sure that their most expensive products also look the most shredded, bro. So let's work on our versions of our Apple products and see if we can make some updates based on the details. For a base level product, we wanna add as little detail as possible. We still need to put these antennas in, but we'll make them flat and smooth with the surface and same with the bottom. For the details on our most expensive product, let's go as nuts as possible and try to add as many details. So we're gonna add that crazy grill from the Mac Pro and we'll also add kind of a protrusion thingy on the bottom. Nice, looks cool. We have the base level with the least amount of detail, the mid level with a little bit of detail, and the pro version with as much detail as possible. Moving on to the next little detail I noticed while making the last video is the subtle use of chrome. Chrome and shiny things in general are used on a lot of premium and luxury products, so there's a strong mental connection between shiny and price. Apple knows this and has decided to use Chrome on only their more expensive products. But Apple's not just randomly slapping Chrome on any which way willy wally. Apple uses the Chrome to signify that an area is particularly high quality or performance. They use it to show precision mechanical performance, like on the AirPods Max. They use it to show some area of technical performance, like on the iPhone camera bezel. And sometimes they use it just to make a product generally appear more expensive, like on the sidewall on the iPhone or the handle on the Mac Pro. Logically, Apple doesn't use this a lot on their base level products. They keep the Chrome as a differentiator to make sure their more expensive products look more expensive. So let's update the most expensive product we have and add some Chrome in to make sure it looks even more expensive. I think we probably need some antennas for performance and to signify that those are the best antennas ever, we're gonna make sure they have a ton of Chrome on them. Ooh yeah, those things are looking performance performancey and overall this thing is looking like it's worth a ton of money. So moving on to materials and finishes. In the last video I very quickly touched on how Apple uses color to differentiate between product categories. But I think it's worth a deeper dive into what exactly they're doing. Since Apple already has to specify a color for each product anyway, using color as a way to differentiate price is a really easy win. Base level products are fitted with what I would call a pretty boring range of colors. Usually it's black, white, and one hue to kind of make one color, and that's about it. So on the iPhone, it's this kind of not very exciting red. Basically, Apple is just covering all the bases in this price range, but no one's really gonna wanna buy a phone based on the color. Mid-level products usually follow fashion trends a little bit more. Apple does a lot of research into current trends to really find colors that people are gonna wanna buy. And just like fashion, Apple will typically rotate these colors to bring in fresh ones with every release. Personally, I really like the green color on the iPhone 13, and if I bought a new phone, I would probably buy the iPhone 13 just based on the color. Moving on to higher end and more expensive products, Apple really gets into darker, earthier, and more metallic tones. They seem to follow more color trends from high end furniture design, and because of this, the iPhone 14 Pro looks more premium and expensive when compared to the iPhone 14. In general, the iPhones all roughly have to be the same shape and size due to ergonomics and use requirements. With color, Apple has an easy way to differentiate these similar looking products into different price categories. So if we take a look at our products, we can differentiate these with a little bit of color. For a base level product, we want to go basically basic. So we have a blackish color, a whitish color, and just one color just to have a color. For a mid-range product, we want to start having a little bit more fun. I played with the colors I made in the last video even more to make something that's even more fashionable and trendy. So we have kind of a darker color, a lighter color that both look nice, and then a range of colors that kind of fit in with modern color trends. I like this the most. Actually, the range of colors is what makes it cool too. And for the highest level version, we wanna go with dark, earthy, metallic colors. So a really heavy looking dark version, a really metallic dark light version, and then a couple other colors that make the product feel even heavier than it already looks. Each level has a color scheme that kind of fits. So we have the basic colors for the base, the trendy colors for the mid-level, and the earthy, heavy, metallic colors for the most expensive. So that's my second little installment of me being an Apple fanboy. I hope that helps you understand how Apple uses its product design to get you to pay more, or at least how you can go about designing your own range of products. If you think you need help designing or redesigning your product, I'm doing more freelance work these days, so you can hit me up on graydowdydesign.com. I'll leave a link. Thanks, we'll see you in the next one, and uh, have a good one.